Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to The Silburn Show. I'm your host, Silburn Sidiel. And today, we have an uh, interesting guest, a business consultant, international speaker, mind coach, and the man they call the entrepreneur, Mr. Julian Hall. Have a look at this video. Becoming the best version of yourself is an ideal most people don't think is possible. But that's only because we've never been given the tools to enable us to do that in a simple way. We've been forced to piece together ideas, philosophies and systems from different places and wonder why we struggle to make progress. In business we talk about being investment ready, but what about being entrepreneur ready? If you want to learn how to become an ultra successful entrepreneur, where do you go? And that's why the Ultra Academy is so important. Now you've seen the video of Mr. Hall in person. Here is a man in person on the red chairs. Hey, Julian. Hi, Sylvan. Hey. Glad to be here. Good, How good. You doing? Welcome, man. Thank you very much. It's good getting very interesting and exciting persons. It makes the atmosphere very charged. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, first of all, what's an entrepreneur? And I say why, because I had a gentleman some time ago. He was an entrepreneur. And uh -huh. I said I was an entrepreneur because I rapped. Okay. So what is an entrepreneur? <laughs> good question. Yeah. So... Uh, the term entrepreneur, yeah. um, it comes from the Latin word ultra, which okay. means beyond. Yes. And the reason why I coined the term is because as an entrepreneur, mm. I realized that there were factors which contributed to an entrepreneur's success. Mm. And they went beyond the idea of just thinking about money. So if you think about the word entrepreneur, it's yeah. tied to the word enterprise, which is yes. really about making money, being very commercial, which, yeah. is, which is cool. Yeah. However, there are elements which support entrepreneurships, uh, mm. entrepreneurs and support enterprise in, uh, in, in being able to get to a point of success. Right. And what I realized is that the really successful entrepreneurs that existed out there, they didn't do it for the money. Mm. If you speak to you know, um, any millionaire entrepreneur or entrepreneurs that have been doing it for a long time, they'll all tell you that if money wasn't a factor, they would still do it simply yes. because they have found their calling almost. So right. they've found um, their value. I'll get a buzz out of and something. And they get a buzz out of something. Yes, well, I'm yes. not saying the money's not important. Of course yeah. the money's important, but it's not the only element, right? Mm. So the idea was to go beyond the idea, ultra, mm. going beyond the idea of just making money and thinking about creating value. Yes. Now, this is really important because value creates byproducts one yes. of the byproducts is is money right um but in order to in order to make money it's impossible to make money yes you know we will talk about let's make money but you can't make money yes. can you you know yes. we don't have a machine that makes money okay? only the government isn't it only the, <laughs> apart from the government <laughs> our, our esteemed government yeah. but but us as individuals, we can't actually make money. So yes. that term, going out and making money, is incorrect. And it sets, yeah. us up in, it sets us up incorrectly psychologically. What we need to do is we need to create value right. to our customers, to our clients. And then they'll, if we create enough value, they'll exchange their hard-earned cash, um, hard cash for our product or service. Yes. Right? So the job of an entrepreneur is to create something of value. That's the first thing that an entrepreneur yes. needs to do. But in order to do that, you can't think about making money. Because if you think about making money, you will just hop onto the next trend. Yes. Whether you might say, okay, today it's about mobile apps, or it's about trading, mm. or it's about property, or yes. it's about you know being a dot com millionaire or right, whatever. Right? right. You'll jump on a trend, and the problem with jumping on a trend is that you you don't you don't stay genuine to who you really are. Right. Right. right? The That's only way you from. can create value is if you stick to what you're passionate about and what you're really good at at the same time. Mm. I, I always draw this distinction because people say, just do what you're passionate about. Yeah. But what if you're passionate about lots of things and some of, some of them you're not, you're, you're not good at? You lack right? the ability to. You lack the ability yeah. to actually deliver on a, a product or service of excellence. Right. Very interesting. So yeah. do something that you're really passionate about mm. because then you stay true and genuine to yourself. If you do that for long enough, you will create some value. You'll create value over and above uh, the other Me Too businesses in the market or your competitors. And you'll naturally create something which has um, a, a, uni a, a unique selling point. You will yes. naturally create something that your audience will want to buy. And at that point, money is then a byproduct. Can I just ask a question then? So therefore, you know when people are embarking onto a business yeah. and they say, I've got this passion for do this, doing this. I know I can do this because I've got the ability to. Should they then be coining their movements based on the competitors? Or should they go forward with what they're naturally good at and passionate about? In my own experience, and this is what I've done, yeah. if I'm moving into a market, yeah. um, I 
think about what it is I want to do yeah. without any influence yes. externally. Yes. And that way I keep it pure. So I think about the market, I think about the, the problem I'm trying to solve, and then I come up with uh, you know, a very raw idea of yes. what it is I want to deliver. Yes. At that point, once I have my direction, I'll then look into the market to see what other people are doing. Right. Simply just so that I can learn about the market dynamics, yeah. learn about how they may um, deliver their product, mm. learn about pricing, learn about you know the uh, the, the marketing the language and, operation, the, and, and the yeah. method of operation. Yes. But that I call the mechanics of business. Right. The only reason I look at competitors is to work out the mechanics of business, right. not the core um, value yeah. that I'm trying to, that that, I'm that, trying that, to that's, deliver. That's very powerful. I mean, that's so crucial. I mean, and this this is why you are, you call yourself not a life coach but a business coach. Yeah, I suppose... Um, I'm linking it that way, I don't, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah. um, one of my clients actually, actually said to me that, I, that the impact I have is like that of a life coach. Yes. But I'm a business coach. Yes. That's what I do. I'm about business. I'm about entrepreneurship. Yes. However, and I'll challenge any business coach out, out mm. there to, to, to dispute this, mm. but business coaches today in 2015 know that entrepreneurs or business owners are affected yeah. directly, not indirectly, mm. are affected directly by other areas of their life. Yes. So if somebody's going through a difficult time in their life, mm -hmm. that is going to affect their business. Yes. It just is. I mean, you know, it's, it's ridiculous to assume that an entrepreneur can be successful and have lots of other challenges yes. in their life or the rest of their life is in ruins mm -hmm. but yet they can still be successful in business mm -hmm. that doesn't ring true and i think that um there's a holistic or a balanced approach yes. to entrepreneurship that we now need to take and a lot of the drive behind entrepreneurship was because i wasn't happy with the mm -hmm. high failure rates in entrepreneurship yes. so we seem to be happy with the status quo that 80% of entrepreneurs fail mm. in the first few years, right? We seem to be happy about it. We seem to be happy with that. Mm. If BMW had a part that failed 80% of the time, mm -hmm. they would recall that part. They, yeah. They'd do a recall. If there was a process in a corporate business that failed 80% of the time, mm. they would revisit that process. Yeah. If there was um, a medicine on the shelves in a chemist mm. that failed 80%, they'd probably still keep it there, yes, but yes. Um, they should recall it because it doesn't work. But with entrepreneurship, we seem to be okay with the, with the you know, 10 to 15% of people mm. making it. Now, I wasn't happy with that because I had so many people coming to me asking me whether or not they should become an entrepreneur. Yes. So, you know, they saw me leave a corporate job and you know, do my own thing. And I suppose, you know, um, and, and it's a good thing that they saw me do it. So they thought, well, if Julian can do it, mm. then surely I can, right? Which, which is great. But it's interesting because entrepreneurs, you know, um, you very rarely hear about their backstory. Mm. You know, the, when you hear about an entrepreneur, it's generally at some point when he's blown up or he's a yeah. celebrity and, you know, everything's going well. Not, not when they're going through Not the, when they're going through, through the, the difficult and going through the process, yes. right? Because that doesn't make headlines. Yes. That, that doesn't sound exciting. Um, but the reason why I wanted to address entrepreneurship was because people were saying to me, ask me questions like, I'm in a full-time job, should I leave and become an entrepreneur? Yeah. Or I'm in university full-time, I want to leave and become an entrepreneur. Yeah. And they were asking me life-changing questions. Yes. So I felt a responsibility to be able to give them something, a, an answer that had some depth to it. So I had yeah. to look at entrepreneurship and I realized that it, in my estimation, it was flawed. And it was flawed yeah. because it was just focusing on money and I wanted entrepreneurship to really take a holistic approach. So therefore, can I categorize entrepreneurship then as a combination of being a, a life and a business coach in steering someone in their entrepreneurial endeavors? You can. <laughs> I'll, I'll allow you to do that, Silvan, but only because it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I tell you what, because the, the, there is this, there's this also concept that um, it, it is like monetizing, mon or monetizing um, the whole life coach based on person's shortfalls. Is there a justification, or there is a, for charging persons? for the whole life coach and the whole, how do you quantify it sometimes? How do you quantify it? How do you, how do you put a cost factor to it? It's based on value, you know. Yes. Um, my older brother uh, runs a removals business in the yes. States, in Florida, and he has done for about 30 years. Yes. And uh, he told me his pricing philosophy. Yes. And he said that when a customer rings up, he'll normally be the most expensive 
remover, a mover that, um, uh, that they'll get a quote from. And they'll always ask him, you know, uh, Ralston, well, how come you're more expensive than, mm. than everybody else? And he said, don't worry about the cost, worry about the value that I'm bringing. You, so yeah. he says, you can, you can employ a mover who is cheaper than me, but what if they break that antique piano? Yes. What if they move your wardrobe and it's mm. scratched? What if your, your experience with them is terrible and it, and it stresses you out? You, you won't get that with my company. Yes. So there, there is an, uh, there's an intangible value that comes along with my service, right? Yes. Um, and people get that, right? People get that. People understand that you're not just buying a product. Mm -hmm. You are buying an experience, yes. which is part of the reason why Apple are doing so of well. Of course, of right? course. Because classic people, example. Classic example, because yes. people buy the Apple experience, yes. right? So and I to be guess, a part of that family as well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. So when people, and just to um, bring this in, into context, yes. I never sold, I never set up to um, sell coaching services. Yes. That's not what happened. In mm. fact, I was having a conversation with someone just a few days ago, actually. Mm. And what happened was, when I started running my own business, um, people were interested in, in how I did it, mm -hmm. right? So they would ask me, can you give me some advice on how to set up a business? Yes. So I did that once, I did that twice, and then somebody said, oh, can you give someone else some of your time, mm -hmm. a friend of mine, to tell them how to run their business? Yes. And then someone said, Julian, I'm setting up a business, can I have six months of your time? Yes. And then I realized, okay, it's, this is my time, and right. my time has a value. Right. Course, right? Give value. And it's value based, yes. right? And the value that I can bring to you will um, reduce mm -hmm. the amount of mistakes that you're going to make. You're still going to make mistakes, but it, it will help to reduce and absorb some of the mm -hmm. mistakes that you'll make and hopefully uh, smooth your road to success, mm -hmm. as it were. And, and, and there's a value to that. So, so the, therefore, the, the next question I was going to ask you, I believe you've answered it, what sets you apart from others? You know what, um, and I say this quite boldly, yeah. nobody does what I do in the way that I do it. Nobody. Yeah. I, am, I, I am completely unique. And I don't say that from a point of ego. Yeah. I say that from a point that I've realised what everybody else should realise. Yeah, I, I needed to say that again, and, and, and because it is very profound and it's very powerful in the sense that confidence sometimes can be classified as ego and be hot-headed, but really and truly, that's value. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, I'll say it once yeah. more. I am 110% unique. There is nobody who yes. does what I do yes. in the way that I do it. Yes. And I'm only saying that because I have realized my value and I've realized yes. what I think everybody else should realize. And early on in one of my businesses, we used to run a, a, a digital marketing um, yes. consultancy. And companies would come to us and say, mm. Julian, find me, find a unique selling point in our yes. product yes. so that we can go to market. And I would struggle sometimes. Mm. And um, there, was, uh, there, was an, there was a guy who had a travel business, mm. right? And he would do tours to um, Central and South America and, you know, places like that, yeah. exotic places yeah. like that. Yeah. And he wanted me to find a unique selling point so we could go to market. And I struggled because there were lots of people doing the same thing as him. Yes. And then one day, as I was sitting down talking to him, he, he told me about his experiences and um, you know, the fact that he'd been to all the places mm -hmm. that he's creating tours for, for. And he had really good experiences and really good stories from each one of these places. And yes. I sat down and I said, you're the unique selling point. Yes. The fact that you have actually been to these places yourself, yes. you know the, the, you know the people who, who own the bars mm. and, the, and the tour guides down there and all the rest mm. of it. I said, you're the unique selling point. And I realized shortly after that, when, people, when we did a survey uh, asking people why they did business with us, they said they did business with us because of me and my business partner. Right. Not because of the services we offered, because lots of other people offered the services, but they did it because of us. So I realized, ah, okay, so we are, we, we as individuals are the unique selling points yes. in our business. Um, now, that takes a degree of courage, mm -hmm. meaning, um, People who have issues with identity and self-esteem don't feel valuable enough to be of value in a business. Yes. So they try and hide behind a brand, essentially, mm. right? Um, and it, it, it's no, it's no m coincidence or mistake that a lot of the really successful brands that exist, whether we're talking about the Mark Zuckerbergs or the Richard Bransons mm. or you know all of these big brand name businesses, um, the Julian Halls, of course. the Julian Halls, of yes, course, of course, yes, of course. Um, they have. They have a personal brand, yes. which is synonymous with the company brand. Yes. 
right? And that's because people buy into people. Now, is it that also when someone has an idea, sometimes people always say people steal their ideas or whatever like that, always say there's something bigger than an idea and that is a USP and most importantly, a blueprint. And that's a blueprint that makes a big difference as well, isn't it? It, it is, it is. And I think that, um, I remember, it's going to be a silly analogy, but I think you'll get the point. Yeah. When I was younger, I remember first hearing Beanie Man. Is it? Yeah. Right? Zaga, zaga, zaga. And, and, and <laughs> but even before that, right, there was a time when Beanie Man kind of sounded like Budrey Banton. Yes, yes. Right? And people thought, why are you, why do you, why are you copying Budrey? Or Cobra started, or Cobra sounded like Ninja Man, for okay, example, right? Okay. And there was a time when a lot of artists sounded exactly the same, mm. right? And one could say that they copied each other, one mm. copied the other. But over time, as that artist grew, they found their own voice, they found their, their own. own style, and they stepped into themselves, yes. right? So I always say to people when they have an idea, oh, somebody's going to steal my idea if I put yeah, it out there, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah, right? Yeah. Um, and I always say to them that, it's not about the idea, it's about the execution of that idea, yes. right? And um, a really su successful entrepreneur um, said that uh, the idea is 1%, execution is 99%, yes, yes. right? And it's the way in which you execute that idea mm. which will enable that idea to become successful. Mm -hmm. It's not the idea of itself, yes. right? And I always implore people, put your idea out there, yeah. put it out there. Don't right? worry about it. And don't worry about yeah, it yeah. because if you are genuine, and, and this is why, and this is why it, it, it always, I always bring this yeah, back to, that's powerful to, stuff, to yeah. you being genuine with it, yes. right? Because if you are genuinely about that life, if you are genuinely about that aspect mm. of your business, then nobody will be able to take that away from you. That's, but it, but yeah. if you're just doing it because you think you're going to make a quick buck, yeah. then really you're an imposter in that industry. You shouldn't be in that industry right. in the first place, right? right? You should be in, because, it, and, and I think the, there's a moral thing here, right? Yeah. You go into business to sell a product or a service. Yeah. Somebody's going to buy that product or service. Yes. Whoever buys that product or service should have a good experience with that product or service. They're not going to have a good experience if you aren't genuine and you don't de deliver yeah. genuine value to that product or service. So you're going to have a negative. You're going to negatively impact someone's mm -hmm. experience. And especially if you're not there tomorrow when they come back for a change or something. Right. Like that. Absolutely. Fantastic, Julian. Well, Julian, I want to go on to the next question here, and this is something which, which is very crucial. This show here is to inspire, motivate, educate. One of our favorite things that we normally say is motivation is motive in action. And I think that is something you say. That's right. I've That's heard a, you say one it. of my... Yeah. Uh, Do you sounds. mind explaining motivation is motive in action? Yeah. So I did a website called Ultrapreneur Sayings. And yeah. it was 365 sayings yes. to follow on from the book that I yes. did. And one of the sayings is... Um, yeah, motivation is motive and action. Yeah. And this is the thing. So we talk a lot about motivation. Mm. Right? In the last few years, um, you know, because of the, the wealth mindset, and yeah. everybody wants to be motivated. Yeah, it's all this big thing about thing. motivation, yeah. Yeah. right? And people, people go to church to be motivated. They read motivational books. They um, listen to motivational speakers and so on and so forth, right? But the problem is that most of those people are stuck in a cycle of motivation, mm. meaning that... You can only be motivated truly and sustain motivation mm. if you know why you're being motivated. So what I mean by that yes. is you have to understand what it is and why it is you're yes. doing what you're doing. Yes. Right? You have to find your reason, your purpose, your reason why you want to do this business or do this project mm. or set up this company. Right? Because unless you understand that, your motivations are only going to be short-lived. They're only going to be fired up yes. to be then, uh, you know, reduced down, yeah. right? Um, and, and you see this, be, you, you can see the cycle of individuals mm. who need to read a motivational book. They get all excited yeah. and then it dies down and then they need to, need to read another motivational yeah, book to and then it up. dies down. Yeah. People who are really making strides, I don't want to say that they don't, that they don't read all this motivational know, stuff, but a lot of them really don't. Yeah. And the reason why they don't is because the motivation, they don't need external factors to yeah. motivate them. Intrinsically, they're, motivated, from they're motivated by the things that are moving them. And right? people write about them. And people write about them. <laughs> Steve right? Jobs. Right, absolutely, right? <laughs> so I think that all this motivational stuff is mm. good, yeah. but it should, only, it should only almost be a starter. It should almost just start yeah. the engine. So therefore, it, it has to be placed in proper context. Absolutely, right. yeah. yeah. Ultra kids. Tell me about ultra kids, because there's lots of ultra factor. 
Ultra Kids. So, Ultra Kids Club yes. um, mm. is a company, it's an education mm. company that I've set up, which introduces entrepreneurship yes. to primary school children. Okay. And the reason why I set that up, I, I'll, I'll give you a story. Mm -hmm. My daughter, who's seven, a couple of years ago, we were in the supermarket and she saw someone stacking shelves. And she said, Daddy, what's that, what's that man yeah. doing? I said, oh, he's stacking shelves. He's putting, you know, the rice and mm -hmm. the stuff on the shelves. She said, why is he doing that? I said, well, that's because that's his job. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. Why is he, what's a job? I said, well, you do that to make money. That's mm -hmm. what he's doing, right? That's his job. She said, no, Daddy, that's not a job. A job is when you're an entrepreneur and you're going around and you're speaking to people mm. and you're going to different countries and, you know, you're helping people with their businesses. That's mm. what a job is. Mm. And I said, no, no, honey, that's, that's Daddy's job, but mm. there are other types of jobs out there too. Yes. And I realised that in her, in her, her experience yes. of what a job or, or a career <coughs> was, yes. was coloured by what she saw me, by, right. by, by what I was doing. Right. Um, and essentially, you know, she saw a job being something that you owned as an entrepreneur. Yes. Right. And I thought that was amazing because mm. how often do young children in their first idea of what a job means, how often do they marry that with entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. Very, very rarely. That's very interesting. Does yeah. that happen? Yeah. Very rarely does that happen. And I thought she's, you know, she's benefited from that because of me. Um, but there are hundreds of thousands, millions of children around the world who won't benefit from that, yeah. right? Um, so I wanted to find a way to scale that. I wanted to find a way to take that experience that my daughter had and scale it, yes. right? By hundreds of thousands or millions. So I created the Ultra Kids Club mm -hmm. um, and it started to fucking show yeah. the, the colouring book. It started off with the colouring book um, mm -hmm. which, which I developed and yeah. there were two characters um, Penelope and Malachi, yes. and the idea is that they take children on a journey mm -hmm. to become the best versions of themselves that's possible. Your, that's the Ultra Kids. This, this is the, the, the Ultra Kids coloring book, and it's yeah. um, it, it's, it's got a number of you know quotes in it which okay. are synonymous with entrepreneurship, but they're also synonymous with life values. And it's for children. It's for primary wow. school children specifically, wow. yeah. and um, and we've also developed the Ultra Kids Club um, web and mobile app, mm -hmm. which has got um, stories. It's got a goal setting app. It's got a lot a lot of activities yes. which children can use on their mobile phones mm. or go into YouTube and listen to stories. But all of these, all of, the, all of the content in the activities on the stories are related to entrepreneurship or yes. related to um, values which relate to entrepreneurship. So, so the idea is, and you know, I, in, in 20 years time, mm -hmm. our children are gonna be running the country. Yes. And in my estimation, how amazing would it be if they ran the country in an enterprise and an entrepreneurial way. And it's our responsibility to give that to them. Do you believe that young people, and I ask this question most times to persons, understand that they are the future and understand that they are the leaders of tomorrow and understand that they're the ones going to run the country, they're the ones going to run the economy. Do you believe that they understand that based on your experience? No, they don't. They're right. completely unaware. And again, it's because of context. Yes. The, the current education system, and a lot of educators know this, doesn't provide the necessary context to allow young people to see themselves as part of the future of yes. the, the country or the future of the economy, right. right? I believe entrepreneurship can help to bridge that gap because what entrepreneurship allows young people to do is it, it allows them to tap into their potential. Mm. It allows them to think creatively. It allows them to think innovatively. Um, and it allows them to bridge the gap between um, between them and really successful mm. entrepreneurs that they, that they look up to. Yes. It allows them to see the, 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 the mechanisms and the mechanics that exist, yes. um, which are oftentimes stuff, you know, digital and yes. stuff that they're already used to, but they're consumers of this stuff, but they don't understand how the business side of it works. Mm -hmm. But just opening up their minds to the possibilities or just it, pulling back the curtain and saying, well, um, you, do you know the guy who did Snapchat was was a young guy, 2021 20, or whatever, um, and he developed a mobile app, he had an ID, he was still living with his parents. Yes. Or Mark Zuckerberg was really young when he created yeah. Facebook, Facebook and yeah. so on and so forth. Um, but actually pulling back the mechanics and getting them to understand that these guys saw a problem, mm -hmm. you know, that they used technology to create the solution and, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. It What it does is, it reduces the barrier to entry in their minds because in their minds they think they need to be living in the right area they mm. need to have be, have the right education they need to have millions of pounds behind them and all this kind of stuff which just isn't true yeah right yeah. and i think just exposing them to 
the realities, the positive realities mm. of business, um, I think bridges the gap for them because when you, when you talk about entre business and entrepreneurship, you're talking about a career choice, you're talking right. about their future. Right. And if they can see into their future, if, if entrepreneurship can be a bridge to enable them to see into their future, mm. then I think that's a wonderful thing. I'm going to come back to the political bit a bit later, but before I go there, um, the books that you mentioned, what would it, I notice your books are, are bestsellers on Amazon or so. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Am I yeah, correct? Which correct. one would you say is your top um, book here? Well, it, it would have to be this. So yeah. um, the book Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur, 100 Ways to Up Your Game. Um, I, again, the reason why I wrote this book was to, I, I guess, update entrepreneurship mm. because I felt as if, you know, entrepreneurship was outdated. Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't feel, I didn't feel like it worked in a modern context. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to... Um, you know, bring it up to date, mm -hmm. um, give it some brand appeal and make it accessible to young yeah. people as well. Yeah. Because I think there's one challenge trying to bring um, the old guard mm. of business into the present day yes. and how business works now. That, that, that's one challenge. Yes. But the other challenge, and I think, again, looking at, at the future of the, the country and the future of the economy, mm -hmm. is saying to ourselves, OK, we want... We want, the, we want the United Kingdom to, to be more entrepreneurial, yeah. but what are we teaching the young people? You know, what ideas are we giving them yes. you know, um, in, in terms of the context around entrepreneurship? Right. Um, you know, and how is that being delivered? What ideas are they going to be taking forward yes. with them? And, and I simply wanted to contribute right. to that. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to see more of the books and the link to Julian on our website, which is www.silburn.com. Julian, I want to top into the elections. What do you think as an entrepreneur? that they need to zero in on? I think it's about opportunity. Mm. And I think that there needs to be a levelling of the playing field of opportunity. Right. And I suppose, in my experience, mm -hmm. um, it would appear that there are... There is lots of opportunity out there, yes, but it doesn't seem to be accessible to every social mm. economic group mm. that exists in, in Britain, which is which I think is a shame. Yes, yes, and yes. you know, a lot of the opportunities that are out there, be it whether it's funding or projects or whatever, a lot of them don't aren't fully tapped into, yeah, right, because you know their, their reach doesn't go far enough yes. into various communities to allow you know some of these. Um, people who have lots of potential to tap into them right. and to use them as a, as a right. springboard mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to get to take themselves up to the next level. And, and I think the reason why that's important is because um, you know, we're talking about job creation, yes. we, we're talking about um, putting money back into the economy. Um, so I think that um, there needs to be more access. More access. More access. Do you think the present government is doing that? I know that they are attempting to. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose, and you know, I've I've worked quite closely with a number of government schemes yeah. um, in in you know in either supporting or delivering them, yeah. and I guess for me it's just about the mechanics of yeah. delivery mm -hmm. and the mechanics of how far and wide that message is spread, and and I suppose it's just about you know um, those messages and those schemes penetrating. Yes. Um, you know, different social economic groups so that they can get the most bang for their buck, I would imagine. Julian, what's your favourite quote? What's your favourite quotation? Is it one from you or one from someone? Is it one from you or one from someone else? What would you say is your favourite? What, what drives you? What motivates you? Which is a word that if you have a word to leave, you leave with someone. What is it? You know what? Um, it would be to unlimit your potential. Unlimit your potential. Unlimit your potential. And I say that because, you know, we're only here once. Yes. I know some people believe in reincarnation, yes. but let's say you're only here once, yes. right? Yes. Um, I do believe that you should take full advantage of, you know, the time that you're here. Yes. And in order to take full advantage, you need to tap into your potential. Mm -hmm. And there are so many things which limit our potential, mm -hmm. um, be it... Our, the relationships we have, both personal and professional, mm. our physical and nutritional health, our internal well-being, the stuff that we do you know, on a day-to-day -day basis that we love or yes. hate, a lot of those things limit our potential. Yes, yes. And I believe that if we can put um, positive energy into a lot, of, a lot of those aspects of our life, yes. that it will help to unlimit our potential yes. and to help us to really live, you know, not just a fulfilled life for ourselves, yes. but to have really genuine and positive impacts yes. on other people around us. Fantastic. 
Ladies and gentlemen, unlimit your potential. Am I right, Julian? That's right. You are right. Absolutely. Unlimit your potential. <laughs> Well, that was a mouthful, and um, I must confess that uh, I need more time to actually unpack and unravel. There are some questions that I really wanted to ask Julian. Didn't get around to it, but I'm sure you'll agree with me that we've got to take him for another time to actually go through some of those key bits about ultra entrepreneur, because I believe that is very crucial at this time, because definitely, without a doubt, we know that um, the world is not as what it seems before. There's no security in the factor. People are now tapping into new things. Entrepreneurs are just blossoming left, right, and center. We've got to encourage that no matter what. So, Julian, listen, it was a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Silver. And ladies and gentlemen, to hear more about Julian, go to our website, www.silburn.com. You'll see his profile and also more details of him. Thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. See you again next time.